Hey folks, well here we have a continuation of 10-8 or, you know, building the tail cone. Yay! As you saw, I just flipped the whole assembly over on the sawhorses and are now uh, working on assembling uh, some of the, you know, rear end pieces. Um, I had to go upstairs and get my Dremel because one of the, or actually the stiffener on either side of that bottom piece uh, is just a skosh too long. Uh, you know, I followed the instructions, but just, you know, for whatever reasons, just a tiny little bit. And so I had to Dremel out a little bit of the side of the stiffener to get that piece in. Which brings up a point, you know, the one of the things you have to do is make the stiffeners have a 45 degree angle. And I don't really know why, honestly. Um, going back and looking at everything, uh, I'm way far advanced now from where you are in this video. And I could, I honestly, I, I think you could easily not add the 45 degree angle and everything would be fine. Uh, except for those two spots at the bottom of uh, that particular piece. There you do need to have a little bit of a cutout, which is what the 45 degree angle I think is supposed to give you uh, in order to get it to line up correctly. I, I don't know why else you have to do it. So I guess what I'm saying is don't kill yourself on the 45 degree angle thing. Add them because you're supposed to, but if it's not perfect, well, uh, it'll be all right. Here I've got it rolled up on its side while I work on adding the Clecos along the bottom of the skin uh, and just generally starting to harvest Clecos from areas as I talked about before uh, and good times. Getting a good pair of sawhorses, by the way, is important. I went and got some that are expendable or ex uh, expandable rather so you can actually raise and lower them as you see fit. Very handy uh, until I realized later as I'm working on the top that I actually raised it too far. And so uh, I had to go back and lower them, which worked just fine. And here I'm going through and beginning the drill on the stiffeners process, just like I did on the other side. Uh, as you can see here, I'm reaching over and I'm adjusting where the little line is. Remember, you, you've got a line along the base or the bottom of the stiffener, and you want to drill along that line through those holes. And so that's what I'm doing. Um, at some point in here, and I don't remember where, I drill into my knuckle. So... <laughs> Uh, I want to talk to that for a minute. That hurts. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, th th this plane's going to have enough DNA of, you know, of my blood and sweat and tears in it that I'm sure we're going to be able to identify it. Um, see me skip ahead there because of the uh, uh, battery ran out. But yeah, I, I accidentally drilled into my right knuckle, uh, or left knuckle, rather. And boy, that hurt. That was not good. That took days to, uh, to for the swelling to go down and... I don't know if I jumped around or if I edited it out or what, but it, yeah, it, it was not pleasant. So be careful when you're using your drills. As a, you know, as you push through, it will jump on you that last little bit, and that's that's what happened to me, and it just right into my index finger. Ouch. Consider that your obvious public announcement for the day. Something else I've been pondering is getting a hanger. Um, I actually have a line on a, a nice tea hanger over at the airport and I'm thinking about going forward and doing it even though I don't need it yet. Uh, it's one of those things that it, it would be immensely helpful uh, room wise, space wise. It would give me an area to, to do painting. It would give me an area to do just so much more. Uh, right now I'm you know cramped inside this garage and real soon I'm not going to have room. Oh, here you can see I'm using the level to make sure that the uh, that everything's level uh, as I uh, do these drillings. Uh, apparently, you need to you know get things leveled and straight and make sure that uh, you know you don't have a twist. No twist. You don't want a twist in your tail. That's not good. So I went upstairs, got my trusty little level, and placed it on the back of the plane so that I could you know make sure that everything was level as I uh, went through and clicked and drilled, and it worked out nicely. Anyway, back to the hangar thing. Um, I think it's a good idea. I really do. Uh, since my airport is so close, it's it's literally three three miles away. Uh, I can uh, get a nice hangar that I can go over there and hang out, and I can do a lot more stuff there. Get it, get all this stuff out of the garage. Um, you know, I don't run the risk of dinging my wife's car or bumping up against my motorcycle or knocking it over or something like that. You know, it just I, I think it's a good thing. Uh, some people have said though, no, because then it's going to add time to your building because you're going to be driving back and forth but it's it's so close that i just i don't think that in this case that's going to be a problem plus um 
the rate that I'm going to be getting is actually really low. It's a lot less than the standard rental rate because I'm going through somebody who is just, he's, he's a good guy and wants to, you know, help a brother out. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'll have it for years at a much lower rate. That's really nice. Uh, so yeah, here I'm working on that front, uh, giant rib, which throughout the entire process, by the way, on this front, that, uh, that front rib, the 1006, uh, you're not actually going to be fully installing it. Um, you're going to Clico it in and it's just going to be there for structural support. Uh, but you're never going to, uh, actually rivet or do any of that to it until you get the fuselage. And I think what ends up happening is you put that and you rivet it into the fuselage and then you rivet the whole fuselage onto the tail. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when you're dimpling the skins, don't dimple those. And when you're, uh, when you're doing any kind of riveting later on, which I've already gotten to <laughs> come in a later video, uh, you're not going to be doing that. And yes, uh, I'm, I'm really, really behind on videos. Again, I've been out working on the plane itself as opposed to doing these videos. So, whoops, it just, it's, it takes a long time to process these videos. So this is all, this is all in 10-9, by the way, and I'm working on all the bell crank housing bulkheads and uh, the, the baggage uh, bulkhead channel, which is that bar that goes straight up and down. And here I'm doing some match drilling on the inside where everything's in place. You know, again, that's that's one of the themes in building an airplane is you put everything in place, match drill it, and then you take it out and put it back in, etc. Just over and over. Here we're putting in the longer ons. Yay, these were fun. And this is where that bending process really came in and you could tell that, yes, I did it correctly because when I slid these in, they act, it actually sat perfect, perfectly against the skin once I clicked it in. So that that two degree bend that I talk about in the previous video, that that one's important, uh, and this is where it really shows. Because if I hadn't done it, it'd stick up above the skin down there, and I guess you could just push it down in place and clico it in. But I have to think that that would be a pain to work with, and it would fight you at every turn. Once I get done putting in the longer ons, uh, then we're working on the aft deck, which I should have moved to camera here, but I didn't. Uh, the, the aft deck is sort of a thicker piece of metal that helps provide torsion, torsional stabilization, and the horizontal stabilizer sits right on top of it. Uh, and you have to kind of uh, clamp it in place. What you see I'm doing there is putting a bunch of clamps in, uh, again, with interest of making sure everything's super tight and making sure the longer ons are you know meeting up against the skin just correctly uh do yourself a favor and get some smaller clamps i, I use really big clamps and they work just fine but i think using some smaller clamps probably would have been better but here's a picture of everything all clamped up i used some um, uh you know high intensity spring clamps there that's what those squeeze clamps on top the gray ones are, are for just so i can get it all assembled and looking correct and make sure that the skin rests correctly on the longer ons which is a thing you need to do that they actually call it out in the plans on 10-11 section AA. It actually shows you how the you know the apex of the long run it needs to be even with the edges of the skin, uh, and then it's just a matter of going through and drilling and click going and drilling and click going and drilling and click going. Yep, that's all we are good for drilling and click going. I think C clamps would have been a good idea, and so I've got those those they're they're giant you know clamps for my woodworking and whatnot, but. Uh, I, I have one C clamp somewhere, and I'm not sure where. I, I usually use these clamps everywhere when I do my woodworking instead of C clamps, and uh, they work fine for woodworking. But in this case, they're a little unwieldy, uh, so C clamps would have been better. I just don't have any, and I didn't really want to run to Walmart or not Walmart, Home Depot, and get any. Follow the plan instructions as always. Um, one thing that will tell you is, even though you've got all those clamps in place, you're not supposed to aft or match drill the aft uh, deck yet. That will come shortly, and uh, it, it makes sense when it does, as with all things. So I finally got to fly again. Um, I posted another video uh, in, in my channel of me flying, and it was just me basically flying around the sky and and uh, chatting with my CFI and then landing, and I, a valuable lesson on landing there. I, I, I learned the correct way to go around, or not to go around, as the case may be. Uh, check it out. Love to hear comments and feedback. Anyway, so with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. I'm going to try to keep these videos around 10 minutes long if possible. And this one just happened to work out that way. This was Memorial Day, actually. 
good times. I really enjoy this stuff. This is this has been a heck of a lot of fun. I've got another one that I'm going to work on uh, here shortly. And I'm going to change the format of my website too. I think I'm going to basically just do the videos and stop doing the text entry along with the videos because I don't know that that's really adding anything. Uh, I'm just basically regurgitating what I say in the video into text form and it adds a lot of extra time. So since there's no value add there, I, I think I'm just gonna leave it to the videos. Uh, if you guys feel differently, feel free to uh, call me out and let me know in the comments. And uh, there we go. Good times all. Remember, very important as you're drilling, don't drill through your hand. You need that. And uh, yeah, here we go. Thanks everybody, I really appreciate your time and uh, see you next time. <laughs>